So again, just uh, here's what we have so far. It's, it's being recorded now, so in case I go fast, because right now I'm going to take it away, but you'll have it there for a poem. You can just watch it. Today's homework is the top part. We're going to be working with tables and equations. One and five are dealing with those. Graphs, the X and Y relationships, seven and eight are dealing with those. Equations and tables. You're probably wondering, like, what's the difference between these two? It's the same thing, except sometimes they'll give you the table, and you look at the equations. Sometimes they'll give you the equations, and then they'll give you choices of tables. So these are really the same thing. Then we have equations and tables, but with rational numbers. That means that there's going to be decimals, fractions. Sometimes kids panic with those. All these numbers are similar problems, and I'm doing number 10. The rest will be for homework. All these numbers are similar problems. I'm doing number 4. The rest will be for homework. These are similar problems. I'm doing five, you're doing one. I'm doing eight, you're doing seven. And that's it for today. So today you only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times for homework, which is what I always promise less than 15. Questions? Now, where do I get this homework? In your Google Classroom. So I'm going to go to my classroom. <clears throat> go to classwork. And this is first period, right there, classwork. Right, I'm going to talk about this data tracker too, okay, in a minute. I'm going to move it up so you can know that it's, that's the most current one. Move up, move up, and now you're up. Now, the only thing that was due from this thing so far was the division of decimals. So yesterday I graded, Friday I graded. Saturday I graded, Sunday I graded, and this morning before coming to work, I graded one more time. That's why I'm not going to accept it anymore. Okay? Whatever I put as a grade, that's your problem. I'm not going to change it, and I'm still going to make you do it during the posada. Okay? Because you have 12 questions to do, which is this. At the very bottom, these 12 questions should have been done by now. I already graded them. Go look at what I put, especially if I put their needs help. I need to talk to you because you do need help so I can work with you. So like during PE comes back to me or during 7th period and 9th period is the best time to come to me. And I write your pass, I sit with you and I help you. Because some of you are having trouble still with it. What's scary, the one with the calculators are having trouble with it. Some of them. So I need to really work with them and sit with them and see what's going on. Because the calculator kind of like just gives you the answer basically. Anyway, this, I am not going to accept it. Whatever you have in red, or blue, that's your grade. What I did, I circled it in red. If you had it in, like, let's say that somebody already had 100 in blue, because I graded it first in blue December 4th. <coughs> then yesterday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I graded it again. And that's it, I'm going to grade it again. Okay? It's a hassle to go in there and grade it and grade it and grade it. That's it. That's plenty of time, like more than two weeks. Now we're going to be working on these. I'm starting with number five. So, you have a paper, right? So, here we go. Number five reads. So, if you notice number five, I already saw that there's a table, right? Yes? And look at the choices. They're all equations. So, we have a table and we have some equations. When that happens, here's what I want you to do. You can start in the back page. That's why Tamara gave you two pages, right? So, we can start in the back page for this guy. And how about them cowboys? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Can't wait to go make fun of Miss Emma Lopez Garcia and Mr. Mora. Because they were texting me on purpose when the cowboys were about to lose. And I was like. But that's what true champions do. They come back and they work from it and they pull it out. So I'm going to go make fun of them later on. And if you're in that class, but you're going to enjoy it. Okay, so number five. So go ahead. I'm going to split the screen, I guess. It's a good game, though. All credit to the Texans. I mean, they, they did a good job. Okay, number five. When you see this type of prompts in the start, the first thing I want you to write quickly is okay. They gave me a table. And first 
slip and fit period flyer students with permission slip. Thank you. So, as soon as I saw that they gave me a table, here's your table and the equations. I'm going to write that quickly as my notes. This is what I expect as work. If this was a star, this is a computer. This is my work on the paper. So go ahead and make a table. And then we have W, L. Right? Now, what did I say W really is for us? For us? X. And this guy? Y. Okay? So, rapido, I, I'm going to put what we are used to. And I'm just going to write what they gave me. One, two, four, eight. Because some of you think that we don't have to do work, and that's what bothers me still. Some of you think, I don't have to do work. Yes, you do. This is what you have to do, the work. Okay? Got it? <clears throat> now, once I'm done with this, here's what are you going to do. Okay? I'm going to first check if I can figure out the relationship between X and Y or W and L. So I'm going to draw my arrow and say, okay, how does the W or the X become the Y or the L, whatever you want to call it, right? The easiest to, I guess, do, which one would probably be the easiest to do? The A is B. Well, let's do the one. I mean, the one should be pretty easy. How does the one become a 64? Times 64. Times 64. Okay, how does a 2 become a 32? Times 16. How does a 4 become a 16? Times 4. How does the 8 become an 8? Times 1. So it's all messed up, right? It's different from what we're used to, right? So what I'm going to make you do when this happens, I'm going to take advantage of the choices. Okay? So I'm going to start with letter A. Letter A says 128 divided by 2 equals length plus width. Okay? Now, who is the length? You, right here at this moment, you choose whichever you want. So, I'm going to choose the smaller ones, but I'm not going to choose the 8 because they're the same thing. I'm going to go with the 4 and 16. Okay? So, who would be the L? The 4 or the 16? Good. Who would be the W? Four. four. Questions with what I just did. All I did is I changed the L for the 16. And how do I know that that's... I just got whichever. I got these. This is what I got. I got those two. That's all I did. All I did is I changed the L for 16, the W for 4. Because they gave me that in the table. Bring everything down. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of mental math today because of purposes of time, but this is bottom out, right? And when you bottom out on that on the side or you punch it in the calculator, it's going to give you the answer of 64. Bring everything down again. Now, 16 plus 4, how much would that be? 20. Bring everything down again. Do they match? So do you think that this equation goes with this table? Of course not. They're not matching. This equation does not go with this table. I am done with letter A. It takes time. I'm not going to lie to you because you're doing like basically free algebra. You're just substituting. Yeah, really simple stuff. Uh, you just have to be careful when you're substituting. Now let me do B. Now if I was able to find a relationship, it's even easier. But we didn't really find a relationship. Maybe some of you can probably figure it out, but that's a tough relationship right there. Okay? It's like a different from what you're used to. So when I can't find a relationship quickly, like we did times 64, times 16, times 4, times 1, but really we're like, you have to do other stuff. So what I would do is I would take advantage of the choices and substitute the letters for whatever the table gives you. So here comes letter B. I'm going to copy what letter B gave me. 2 times 128 equals length times, that, that's not an X, it's times W. So I put a dot, a dot. Okay? All I did is I copy letter B. Now let me make this guy bigger so we can see it better. We'll have the table anyway there. I'm still going to stick to the one we're using, which is 4 and 16, okay? 
Oh, I forgot an eight here, right? It's one twenty eight. Okay. Now, one twenty eight times two. I'm gonna go to the side. Now that one I'm gonna do it mentally because I can't. Well, I can't, but I'm gonna just show you that. Guys, this one I did it mentally, but you should have done bottom out on the side. This one I'm gonna just do it here. 16, 4, 5, 256. So this gives me 256. Substitute the L. Who's the L in the table? Who's the L in the table? 16. Allison, move right here. Who's the W in the table? Four. Four. Okay. Again, you see that L? Or just listen to me. I mean, I don't know why you're messing around. Please. Okay. You see the L? 16. And you know why I let you go back? Because you quickly, you didn't give me, you just quickly said, oh, good, thank you. And I would have just made you, because you came without me, no, uh, some kids are like, oh, please, no, you quickly did your job. So, so just listen, please. You see that L? I got it from the table still. You see that W? I got it from the table still. You could choose any of them. I decided to choose these two. Okay, because they were the smaller ones. Now, 16 times 4, I go again to the side. I'm going to do this one mentally. That will give you 64, by the way. When you go to the side, you will get 64. Did it match? No. no. So does this equation go with this table? No, it doesn't. They're not related. I'm done with B. Now I'm going to letter C. And that's the way you do tables and equations. You just are substituting the letters for the numbers and, and testing them out. Sometimes I'm going to be able to find it faster though. Right now, hopefully we get to one like that. Letter C. 128 divided by 2 equals length times width. Letter C, I just copied it. You just copy whatever the computer tells you, right? You already have your table here, so you don't have to be going back and forth to the computer. Just make sure you copy it correctly. Blah, blah, blah. So there's my equation now. Didn't we already do 128 divided by 2? What was it, 128 divided by 2? It's up here, right? So I'm just going to bring it down already, 64. <coughs> Who was the length? Who was the length? 16. In case you're wondering, like, how do you know the length is 16? Look at the L. And who did we get? 16. I even circled the ones that I'm using. All I'm doing is substituting the L for 16 because that's what the table gave me. Who's the W? 4 times 4. Didn't we do already 16 times 4? Right here, right? And guess what? They match. So probably the answer is letter C. I'm going to put a little question mark and say, you know what? You're probably the answer. I will not choose it. You know why I will not choose it? Because what if the other one works? That might happen, guys. The other one might work, and then you're going to have to try another two sets. Okay? So you never choose quickly. Ah, ya salió. Ya lo agarro. No. Sometimes... Two numbers will work with two of them. So you have to get two more. And then you're going to find that, ah, ya no jalo uno. Jalo uno todavía y el otro todavía no. You understand? All these numbers have to work with the equations. But if you can find that three of them do not work, pues ya sabes que va a ser eso. So right now, if D would not work, pues it has to be seen. We, have, we don't have to try no more, which is a good thing. It's a lot of work, like a lot of substituting calculating. The kid with a calculator, this should be easy for you as long as you set up your equation and your table and substitute. It should not be hard. And you take your time step by step. Letter D. Let me go to my computer. Letter D says 2 plus 128 equals length times width. Does it look good already? No, no, no. Nombre. Just by seeing that we know that the length is going to be who? Well, how much was the length? 16. And the width? 4. Again, where am I getting that? From the table. <clears throat> 2 plus 128. That one I can do it quickly. What's 2 plus 128? 130. 130. And what was 16 times 4? We already did that right now. 64. Did it match? 
Now I know for sure that letter C is the answer. Now I feel confident that letter C is the answer because I was able to find that all the other three equations, the table did not work with this set of numbers. The only one that worked was this equation. Now if I would try all the other ones, should they work here? Yes. If you would try all these other ones, they would work here also. But once we found that these three don't work, why even try? That's the answer. Question number five. <coughs> then I'm going to go over here and say, okay, number five, you're at, the answer was letter C. You're going to click on it. And now if you go back to this, I am done with number five. The answer was letter C. You could even put it here, box it. And now your homework is number what? One. The way I did number five, that's the way you're going to do number one. Questions with one or five. Number one is the same thing. Same type of question. They gave me, look at number one. They gave me the table, there it is. And they gave me the what? The equations. I just want to remind you. A number next to a letter means? Multiply. A number next to a letter means multiply. And of course, there's the H. There's a V. Make sure you put all the work the way I showed you on my paper. You write the table. You write letter A, the first equation, substitute it, calculate it, check if it's true, and so on. Questions with one and five? Now I'm going to go to number four. Number four. This is the most dura. Porque son fractions. That's why I wanted to do number four with you. That's why I call this one on your notes. I call them equations and tables. I should have put with rational. They're, they're really all these. Okay, rational means that there's fractions involved. Okay. It's the same thing, but you have to be more careful because there's fractions involved. So let me do number four. Let me see if I make out these, at least to start it. So let me unzoom so you can see what I would do. I don't know how you're doing in space. Yo porque yo escribo bien grande de adrede para que se mire más bonito. So I'm going to just put a big box around this. So this is number five. I think I'm going to be able to fit number six here. No, you know what? I'm not going to risk it. I'll fit something else here. I'll fit something else here. Let me just go to number four right here. If you have space, let's we'll see here. Number four. <clears throat> number four says the relationship between the P and the K in the table. So they gave me a table again. This time the table is horizontal, but it's the same thing. So I'm going to still draw it like the way they have it. Who's on the top there? P. When they give you letters, use their letters because their equations are going to be using the letters. Who's on the bottom? K. Who's really P for us? X. Who's really K for us? Y. We'll use their letters, but I do this on purpose. We're not going to see why I do this on purpose, okay? In case they would tell me who's independent, because I know it's the X, the P. Who's dependent? The Y, K. That's why I want to use the X and Y thing in case they use other words that we're not used to with P, K. So the first P, we have 1 16th. The second P, we have 1 8th. The third P, we have 1 4th. The last P, we will have 1 half. Over here we have 9 16 5 eighths, 3 fourths, and 1 whole. You can even make this like this. There's my table ready. I just copied it. Mira, no me la copia. And we're going to start the choices now. Now, before I start the choices, who would probably be the better one to use? I just I was just curious what you would tell me because let me see why I'm asking you this question. Choice A says P plus one eighth. This is what I'm asking. P plus one eighth. When you're in elementary, I'm hoping, which probably did not happen, but I'm hoping that they touch how I add fractions. 
And they should have told you that when you're adding fractions, the denominator has to be the same. same. Common denominator. So if I'm working with P plus 1 8, which one should I choose? If I want to have a common denominator that the bottom has to be the same. Is it 16? Which one should I choose? 16. Now look at the equation. P plus 1 8. Which one should I choose? Should I choose the 16th, the 8th, the 4th, or the half? If I'm working with 1 8, which one should I choose? 1 8. What's the 8th? I'm adding fractions, guys. If I don't want to really deal with really coming on me, I'm going to choose this pair. For this guy, I'll choose this pair. Okay? I'll choose him. Because we want common denominator. Because we're adding. Now, if we're multiplying, who cares? If we're dividing, who cares? Because KCF. But we're adding. And we're adding, I want common denominator. So guess what I'm going to use for the array? I'm going to use these two. Okay? You understand? Here we go. P, this is letter A, plus 1 8 equals, now they don't have an equal. Mr. Rivera is making an equation purposely so we can test it. Equal, what do you think I'm going to put? Equal what? Let's see if you guys can come up with that. K, good. Because I want to make sure that the P plus 1 8 equals the K. <clears throat> so who, are, who do I want again? Send me my answer to my office. Yes, sir. Go to the end, at the very end. And if you have your phone, take it with you. <clears throat> Who's the P? In the table? 1 8. So put that 1 8. Plus. You see that one eight? He was already there. Just bring it down. Equals k. Who would be the k? Five eight. Good job. Now let's test it. One eight plus one eight would be two eight. One eight plus one eight would be two eight. Does and then bring everything down. Does that equal each other? No. No. So do you think that letter a goes with this table? No. No. Do you understand what I just did? Yeah. Let me show you again without having all this crap here. I shouldn't say crap. All this stuff. Sorry. Sorry, you too. Can I record? <laughs> okay. There we go. Let me start again. In elementary, they should have taught you that when you're adding fractions, you have to have common denominator. You see the A's? They have to be the same when you're adding fractions. That's why I told you who would I choose. Because I would choose this guy because this is with 8 and mine is with 8. So I need him. All I did is I changed the P to that 1 8. So I had 1 8 plus 1 8. And 1 8 plus 1 8 is 2 8. And 2 8 is not equivalent to 5 8. So I know that this equation does not belong with this table. Questions with letter A? I would bubble this guy. I say thank you very much. You're out of here. And now I'm going to go to letter B. Letter B says P plus 116. So I'm going to go letter B, copy that, exactly the way it is, P plus 116. Equals what? And I'm going to show you my Equals K because our relationship is between P and K. Let me show you what I just wrote. There it is. P plus 116 equals K. All I did is I copied from my computer. The equation. Now let's see if you do better this time. Who do you think I would use for P? Good, you see? 116. Why 116? So we want to have a common denominator when we're working with fractions. The P became 116. You see right there? 116? I made them 116. The second one, was it was already there. And who would be the K now? 916. Now we're going to add. 116 plus 116 would be? 216. Does it match the 916? No. 
So guess what? If I write the letter B, you're not the tape, you're not the equation that goes with this table. Bien fácil, ¿verdad? Bien fácil se acordaban de the elementary common denominator. Okay? You see, last year I risked it and I say, let's change them to decimals. My mistake, worst thing that I did. I said, let me just teach you common denominator again. No me tarda nada. When we're adding fractions, we have to have the bottom ones have to be the same. When we're adding fractions, when we're subtracting fractions, the bottom ones have to be the same. Okay? Let us see. <clears throat> Let her see. P plus one half. P plus one half. Equals what? Equals what? K. Here we go. P plus one half equals K. You tell me from the table. You guys have the table. What do I use for P now? The one half. And who's the K in the one half? One. What's one half plus one half? One. Two. Two halves. But what's really two halves in life? One. Does it match? Yes. Does it match? Yes. Yes, it does. Como que no? One equals one, guys. Do you know what this means in life? This means that I have a pizza and I cut them in half and I eat the whole thing. This one over here means I have a pizza and I still eat the whole thing. Este le gusta por pedacitos y este le gusta toda la grandota. It doesn't matter. You like it by pieces, we give it to you by pieces. You want the whole thing like a burrito, you can have the burrito. At the end of the day, you all eat the same thing, a whole thing. Questions with that one? Do I choose letter C already? No. no. We're going to put a question mark and say, C, you're looking good. Finally, we have letter D. Letter D says P. Let me do a bubble here. Letter D says P plus one fourth equals what? Equals what? K. Guys, if they don't give you the equation, you create the equation with the other letter that's in the table. Just in case you're wondering, then there's a one of K. Because look, do they ever give me equals K here? No, they didn't. Mr. Rivera made it an equation so we can use this strategy of free algebra substituting, substituting the letters for numbers. Who's the P now? Who would you use for the P now? One fourth plus one fourth equals who's the K? Three fourth. What's one fourth plus one fourth? Two fourth. And is two fourths the same thing as three fourths? No, it's not. Let me show you what I just wrote. There it is. They're not equivalent. They're not equivalent. The only one that's equivalent is letter C. Now I feel comfortable that the answer is letter C. And this is the way your work kind of should look. Maybe not, not as much as me. Like I use a lot of paper because I want you to see. But if you look at Tamara, she's able to fit already question five right there. Question four very nicely and beautiful right there, Ms. Tamara. Okay. Letter D, I can box it. Get rid of letter D, it's gone. Questions with number four. The way I did number four, that's what you're going to do in number two, three, and six. ¿Cuánto tengo de tiempo? Todavía tengo así la hora. Questions. Okay, pretty easy, right? Uh, now I'm going to go to the very easy ones, number eight. pipas. This is like as easy as the Texans should have been yesterday. But they weren't. Number eight. Bien fácil I'm going to go back to the space that I had over here because this one I can do it here. This time, did they give me a table? No. Did they give me an equation? They gave me a graph and some numbers. Okay? So let me see what they want. Number eight. I'm going to put it here because I can see me coming. Number eight. They gave me a graph. And when they give you a graph, this is a strategy. Make a 
table. When they give me a graph, you better make a table. I don't care if it's the easiest problem in the world, you're gonna make a table. Okay? Question. Okay. So how do I make a table? Real simple. You guys are doing real good. I wish the whole class was here because yeah. I hope because then they don't watch it. If they watch the video, they'll be okay. When you're absent, you have to watch the videos, guys. Can I buy that? Eight? Okay. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Here's how you make a table, guys. Ready? You see the little dot? You're going to get the ones that are holes. Don't get the ones that are like between. You see the, the one between 5 and 10? I'm not sure what's there. It could be 7. It could be 8. It could be 7.5. It's probably 7. Right? It's probably 7, but I'm going to risk it. However, I'm going to get this dot because this dot for sure is number 2 and for sure is number what? 15. You see, I don't have a... Let me make a marker so you can see. This guy for sure is number 2 for sure. No doubt about it. And he's number 15 for sure. Let me get another color so you can see what I'm talking about. This guy, for sure, he's number 1 in the X. Good. But in the Y, he falls between 5 and 10. And some kids might say 7. Some kids might say 6. Some kids might say 8. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to go with the holes because holes are easy. Right? Don't you think holes are easy? Yes or no? Okay. Because some people will be very sensitive. And I want to, like, it's a true story. One time I, I did have a, right, I'll tell you, because I don't want to waste time with my little stories and then we don't finish. <laughs> I like telling you stories, but then forget it. So the other side, I'm going to get the blue, the whole. So it's two and who? Ten. No, two and who? Fifteen. So I'm going to make my table this way. Let me split now the screen. You need to at least, at least find three dots, okay? At least three dots. At least three dots. So let me make the table. Just make a table. You're going to call it X and what? Y. Who's the X for the blue? Two. Who's the Y? Fifteen. Next. Get the next one that for sure they're holes. Which one will be the next one? Four. Very good. With who? 30. Perfect. One more. We have to find one more hole. Six. Six. And 45. Perfect. There, I'm done with my table. Now, all they want in this one is very easy. All they want to know is who is the independent. Independent. Who's the independent in math? The X or the Y? The X. So who are the numbers that I need? Two, four, six. Who's the one that has those? Well, this one has two, four, six, but it has a bunch of others. This one has two, four, six. That's good. This one does not even have two, four, six. And this one, so this one, this guy is dumb and dumber. This guy is bad because he's in between. This is the right one. Now, some of you are saying, but they, why do they have one and three and five? Because we didn't choose, but they're there, right? The, right? It was always there, but we didn't choose them because they were not holes with the other ones. So what's the answer? D. D. This one does not require work. Just make the table so you can know your independent is always your X. Your independent is always your X. Your dependent is always your what? Y. Question with that one. So the homework has changed because the time has elapsed. Your homework is only this part now. So let me show you what your homework is. Number one, number two, number three, number six, and number seven. This would be for tomorrow then. Okay. I think you could have handled this to be honest, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to wait. So again, one. Two, three, six, seven. So your homework went from uh, eight questions or something like that to four, I think. One, two, three, four, five, five. Five questions, guys. From eight to five. That's a pretty good deal. If you're going to be want to hit the piñata every day and all that stuff next week or this week, you better bring this paper up. You better put the answers on the... Guys, you have to put the answers here so Mr. Jack can go and check how you're doing. Finish later. Do not submit. 
But this one I'm going to collect tomorrow for questions. One, two, three, six, seven. And then the ones that we did in class, four, five, eight. I'm going to collect the whole thing as a grade. Questions. Okay. Before you go, hold on. Before you go, I want my decimal division and my signature of your parents. If you also notice on your Google Classroom, I put something else besides the classroom. I put something called my data tracker. On this guy, I'm going to start giving you the scores for your CPAs and your goals. So let's say that last year in the start, you scored a 75 and your goal was an 80. Well, it's going to be in red because it's going to show you that, you know what, you didn't meet your goal. But let's say you scored a 90. Then it'll turn blue. So all you're going to have to do is keep track of your scores when I give you your scores. And also your goal, whatever your goal is. If it's blue, you're doing good. If it's red, that's not good. So you're going to type your name here, the period, your ID number. And I'm going to start giving you your scores from last year, what your goal was, your score from CPA 1, what your goal was, your score from CPA 2, what your goal was, your district benchmark 1, and your goal, and then your final exam for the first semester, and what your goal was. Every time that you meet the goal, it turns blue. If you didn't meet the goal, it's going to turn red. So you'll be doing that as I give you your scores throughout the week. That's what you're going to do in the one that's called my data tracker. Okay?